Thank you, Swami Suhita Nandaji. We are also privileged to have amongst us Honorable Defense Minister Sri A.K. Antony, who is also the Chairman of the National Implementation Committee for the Commemoration. May I now request the hon Honorable A.K. Antony Saab to kindly address us. Respected Yashtrapati Ji, Respected Chairperson UPA, Shonya Gandhi Ji, Finance Minister Sri Chidambaram Ji, Communication and Information Technology Minister Sri Kabil Sibal Ji, Union Minister of Culture Sri Shimadi Chandrayas Kumari Ji, Swami Sridharanda Ji, Governors, Swami Ji's distinguished guests, friends and colleagues. We have all assembled here today to pay homage to one of the greatest personality of our nation in modern times. Swamiji belongs not only to the all of India, but to humanity as a whole. Great men like him are beyond regional, religious or racial boundaries and embrace the whole nation and humanity in their universal vision. Swami Vivekananda is honored as a spiritual leader thinker and philosopher, saint, a teacher, and a great patriot. He was all of these rolled into one. However, his primary concern was the welfare of mankind. Before he was traveled to the West, Swamiji toured the entire nation and witnessed from close quarters the miserable condition in which the downtrodden masses lived. He understood that the poor masses were in such a pitiable condition due to centuries of social neglect, caste exclusion, and denial of education. Deeply moved, Swami Vivekananda wanted to start social service programs for the upliftment of the poor masses. After his return to India from the West, Swamiji gave a series of lectures in different parts of India, drawing the attention of educated people to the pitiable condition of the poor masses and exhorted them to serve the poor masses with a spirit of worship. Swamiji has once said, and I quote, the root of all evil is the condition of the poor. Priest power and foreign conquest have trodden them down for centuries and at last the poor of India have forgotten they are human beings. In letter to his disciples, Swamiji wrote, your duty at present is to go from one part of the country to another, from village to village, and make the people understand the mere sitting idly won't do any more. Make them understand their real condition and advise them how to improve their own condition. Also instruct them in simple words about the necessities of life and in trade, commerce, agriculture, etc. More than 100 years, 110 years have passed since Swami Vivekananda left the mortal world. The socio-economic situation has undergone a transformation, but his message remains highly relevant and significant even today. His message of tapping the inner strength and potential present in every soul and his idea of man-making education is the need of the hour for the youth of our country. I hope the celebration of Swami Vivekananda's 150th birth anniversary will draw and engage the minds of a growing number of people, especially young people, to the importance of Samaji's inspiring life and message, individually as well as collectively in the life of our great nation. With these words, I conclude by paying my deep respect to Swami Vivekananda, a great son of India, on the occasion of his 150th birth anniversary. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. To mark the 150th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda, may I now request the Honorable Finance Minister Sri P. Chidambaram to kindly release a set of commemorative coins and present the first set to the Honorable President of India. The commemorative coins are in the denomination of Rs. 150 and Rs. 5. Thank you, sir. 
Now may I request the Honorable Minister of Communications and Information Technology, Shri Kapil Sibal, to release a set of four postage stamps and present the same to the Honorable President. Out of these four postage stamps, one stamp is of the denomination of rupees 20, while the other three are of rupees 5 each. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Honorable Chairperson UPA, Srimati Sonia Gandhi, to kindly address us.